Am I still stupid? What is a veggie jam? Stay tuned to find out. So I have a bit of an update or a correction to make to my last update video where I said I wasn't ready to kill all things. There is something I'm ready to kill and that's the seven day plan that they give you. They told me to buy plantains on the list that you can download online. Not one recipe called for plantains in the seven days that they give you. Not one. There is a recipe, however, in the book for plantains and I made it. They were very good. I'm happy I made it, but there wasn't, there wasn't a, a recipe, which means I didn't need to buy the plantains to try to stick to the diet for the seven days, which I was unable. Well, I stuck to the diet, but I didn't make the exact recipes that it said to make for seven days because it was so much so much the coleslaw recipe am i turning into a cabbage can you can you see it am i starting to look cabbage like so much coleslaw even if you buy the smallest head of cabbage you end up with enough coleslaw for 30 people i won't be making the coleslaw recipe again so i was ready to kill the the seven day plan that they gave along with the shopping list you don't need plantains the first week, although there is a recipe and it's good. So let's get into the, the reflections for days eight through 11. It says, no, my pants are tighter. You've made it through the hangover, managed not to kill all the things and are feeling far more peppy. Then you put on your jeans. They're just jeans, not your skinniest jeans, just the normal comfortable jeans. In fact, they're the jeans you wore three days ago. You were too tired to wash them. It's okay, we understand. Three days ago they fit, but this morning you had to take a deep breath to get that button where it ought to be. Seriously, Whole30? Seriously? Luckily, this phase didn't happen to everyone, but if it's happening to you, here's why. The same process that ran you over like a truck a few days ago are still working their magic on your body. Your body composition is not actually changing for the worse, so we assure you. <laughs> we'll see. But the enzymes that digest your food and millions of bacteria that live in your gut are adjusting to the new intake of meat and vegetables and the lack of easy access sugars. This is something they do naturally and these adjustments will go a long way to improve your gut function long term. However, these adjustments can be a bit uncomfortable. Bloating, constipation, veggie dam, diarrhea, or all three may appear or reappear as your gut starts to heal, rebalance, and process the new food effectively. So I did notice, I noticed that I stopped feeling thinner. Within the first few days, I felt like I had lost quite a bit of weight. I can't get on the scale, or I, I can get on the scale. I don't like that word, can't. I can't believe I used it. I can get on the scale. I'm choosing not to get on the scale because the book says not to. But I did notice that everything seemed to have stalled. And I think it's because there was a veggie dam. This is a real thing. This food was going in and it was not coming out and it was about three days where it was not coming out. I think that all the veggies, I think it was the cabbage, all the veggies created a dam and stopped everything from flowing through. We're back to a slow trickle, I'm happy to say, and I'm feeling a little less bloated, but I still don't feel like uh, the weight is melting off. Now this book says that that's not the goal of this this diet, this change in lifestyle, but I was hoping for that side benefit. I still feel thinner than I did when I started, but it definitely feels like it's slowed. Drink your water on this. I am less thirsty today than I was before. Before I couldn't, I was drink all the things. Now it's uh, drink some of the things. So things are changing, things are progressing, things are moving on, I'm feeling better. The veggie dam. Be prepared for the veggie dam. Add some magnesium to your diet, something. The veggie dam does happen in days uh, eight through through nine. I actually want to say it's days seven through nine. There's, there's a, a veggie dam happening. So days 10 and 11, the hardest days. Fact, based on your observing hundreds of thousands of people run th through the program, we know you are most likely to quit your whole 30 on day 10 or 11. By this point, the newest of the the newness of the program has worn off. You've already experienced most of the unpleasant physical milestones, veggie dams, 
but you've yet to see any of the magic that the program promises. I'm kind of, I'm kind of there. My skin hasn't completely cleared up and I still, f I feel bloated a little bit. Like things are not moving like they should. And while you're trying really hard to have a good attitude, today you're incredibly aware of all the foods you're choosing not to eat right now. Mine isn't the foods, it's the alcohol. I am missing alcohol. There's been tons of parties and celebrations and different things going on. I'm actually going to a comedian tonight, Jim Brewer. I'm not gonna drink. I'm gonna have water on the rocks with a lemon. My friend calls it Lake Michigan on the rocks. I'm gonna have water on the, Lake Michigan on the rocks with a lemon all night at the comedy show. I'm super excited to go. I'm happy to hang out with my friends and family. I'm already though anticipating the backlash of crap that they're gonna give me for not partaking in the spirits that will be flowing well. I'm, I can handle the peer pressure. They can bring it on all they want. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna break my, my 30 days. I just need to make it through 30 days. Everywhere you look, you see things you can't have. The melted cheese on your coworker's burger, the creaminess of your neighbor's coffee. I miss coffee, coffee. The coconut milk. It is not a substitute for creamy goodness of creamer in your coffee. Arg, this is hard. Will those results be... <laughs> I thought I had gotten over the stupid phase. It's still kind of hanging here. I feel better. I feel so much less foggy and better, but I think that the, the stupid phase is still kind of hanging out here. Let's try this again. You're cranky. You are impatient. You are a grown up person who can eat cheese if you decide you want cheese. And the whole 30 is just some stupid challenge anyway. This is where you really start to experience the psychological power of your food choices and habits. You've put a lot of effort into where you are right now. Your brain demands some kind of reward, but you deserve it. And food has always been your go-to prize. Food, yes. Drinks, yes. Both. All of it. We, we celebrate with food, soothe ourselves with food and emotionally discomforting times. Food, food is definitely a prize. But instead of a treat, you're standing face to face with the realization that you have 20 more days of perceived deprivation ahead of you. First, if you know these days are coming, then they won't come hurtling out of nowhere and knock you off your game. Prepare for them. You'll have a much easier time. Yes, you deserve a reward for working so hard and staying on point, but it's time you redefine your idea of a reward. Think long and hard about the foods you're grieving and ask yourself what need you're expecting to fulfill with them. Doesn't alcohol fix everything? I think the answer to everything is beer. Are you feeling anxious and looking for reassurance? Are you feeling sad and looking for something to cheer you up? Are you worried you won't successfully finish the program and it's easier to self-sabotage than fail? No, I don't have any of those going on. But I do, I do miss the spirits. Remind yourself that food cannot fill the void for you. When has a cupcake ever made you feel truly accomplished, comforted, calm, or beautiful? I've had a couple that have done that. Cupcakes are magical things. Rely on support from friends, family, or our online forum or social community to see you through. The good news, just get through these two days and it will be much better. And then it goes on to days 12 through 15, which I'll take you through too, because I'm there. It says, I dream of junk food. Hurrah, the slump is over. Most people report that the most negative symptoms we've been describing are gone by the end of the second week. Your pants fit again. Uh, not completely. And I haven't gotten rid of all the negative symptoms. I'm still slightly stupid. You're dreaming. Not your crazy nightmare of strange surrealist dreams. Incredibly, normally realistic dreams about donuts or Twinkies or fast food hamburgers. Often people dream of things that they never actually eat or drink in real life. I haven't had any dreams of food. Mm -mm. That's, I'm not experiencing dreaming of food. I guess that's a good thing. These dreams usually go a day away in one or two days. You'll either enjoy the heck out of it and wake up laughing, or you'll believe you're doing something wrong in your dream and you wake up feeling guilty. Please, there's no guilt about what you do when you dream. That's some advice to take to the bank. 
which is really good news because some of you are seriously picking out why you're REMing. The trouble is, sometimes these dream cravings carry over into real life, the diet soda ad on the billboard is calling your name, and your co-workers heads transformed into a giant Girl Scout cookie as you gaze in disbelief. All joking aside, this phase can be really intense for some people. This is the part of the program where our brains are desperate to drive us back to comfort foods we used to reward ourselves with. Our food relationships are deeply rooted and are strongly reinforced throughout the course of our lives and trying to change them is difficult and an emotional process. So what's been the hardest thing here? Mine is trying to triage the food I bought for seven days that has lasted us two weeks. I'm trying not to let things die. I'm trying to get them into a pot, cook them and eat them. That seven day plan that they give you, it's, it's two weeks worth of food. It's, it's not for one first. That's my first complaint, kill all the things. I wanted to kill that seven day plan. The seven day shopping list, because it said it was for one, it's, it's more than enough for two. And then I went and doubled it. So I have enough for four and it's lasting us two weeks. And so my biggest challenge has been triaging all of the food that I bought and trying to use up what looks like it's about to die and throw it into a pot and eat it before it goes bad and I waste money. I don't want to waste the food. Now, what have I been doing with some of the things? So I used to have guinea pigs and they were my little coast composters. I give them all the scraps of, of veggies and different things I cooked and they ate it up gladly. My Both of my guinea pigs have crossed the rainbow and I am sad that they are gone. I have not replaced them. Critter, caged critters is a lot of work to keep up. And this time in my life is not a smart time to have caged critters, although I desperately want them. So what have I been doing with all the compost and scraps? We have bunnies in our backyard. They've been with us all winter. And so I've been giving the food scraps to the bunnies and trying to pawn it off on them. And some they eat and some they don't. So I just threw some kale out there that was wilting and it's just still sitting in the yard. But they ate the romaine lettuce, the tomato uh, edges that you cut off, and what else did I give them? Some carrot bits and different things, and um, I'm feeding the bunnies with the compost. So tell me, have you tried this Whole30 diet? Are you thinking about trying it? Is this something you're interested in? Let me know your thoughts and comments about my 15 days on the diet. As you live the dream this week, I hope that you be the change that you wanna see and rock on.